First I wish you all a great, uh, happy, intense, uh, uh, complicated, uh, unpredictable, beautiful year. Thank you. Uh I heard a reference to this place as strange. <laughs> to me, this place is normal. Yeah. And everything else outside of this place is strange. I uh, worked all my life to become young. No, you can't persuade me to get old. I will die 27. <laughs> I was born, I grew up old. My youth was spent in old and among old. Then I worked hard to become young. And now I have reached that point. A way of becoming. I am not an exception. I think I am a normal case. Others have been deprived of youth by, by circumstances, parents, excesses of food, sex, uh, passions, exist, existential nonsense, etc. Thank you, angels, for protecting me from it all. Thank you, angels, for guiding me to love uh, normal earthly pleasures, wine, uh, song, and women. <laughs> body, my body always took care of itself. I was always somewhere else. I am amazed it still holds so well. It will last a good while, so I'm not worried, my friends. My ideal are those old people, men and women, in old countries that I used to see as a child. The old man who used to visit my father when I was a child. He used to climb on the roof of our house and stand on his head, <laughs> on the chimney. I was told he was 100. <laughs> So I'm going to have a 
these folks. And what I'm asking everyone, we're going to have a very fluid uh, flow of the presentations. And I would like to hold the energy. Let's not applaud anything. We're just going to keep this flow moving for the time we're here. Uh, there's so much hard expression from these members of the Oregon Project. And I want to ask us all, I do ask all of us, to hold that energy together. It's a great celebration. One like this will never happen again. Jonas was a very, very unique human being and a great contributor to many, many lives. So uh, with that, we begin. <laughs> He simply 
did not know what it was meant, what it meant to be defeated. <laughs> and he wasn't defeated when I just put him on the anthology, nor did he ever speak a single word of reproach to me for forcing him into that job for some 30 years. No one I've ever known had such a genius for institutional leadership. And he had a style that was the opposite of micromanaging. He would just choose someone to run something, and when it didn't work, he'd get rid of them. <laughs>
You're gone, dead and alive. Your spirit is everywhere. Your death cloth is open. My memory is unfrozen, moving back and forth, up and down, and according to your images. Lavender and warm fields of France, your love of your bonds, your love. The men on the plane to Buffalo, on the way to the autobiographical film conference in 1973. You often cried, you and me and Hillary were asleep, sitting next to me. I smelled his burn. Watching films, listening to Brackage, who loved it. Ken Jacobs, his favorite, Hollis Frampton. He would join us with this. Filmmaker, a film to his credit, a creator of the anthology film archives. I was young, and I loved our film. He saw me, he sat next to me. He brought me into the world. Back in New York, recorded me. We became lovers. You and your green corner of the city. Spring came, long walks, wine, good food, happiness, love. I loved your films, your kindness. Your love surprised me, grounded me. You moved in with me, you brought your film in the table. We drank wine, laughed, and talked. What are you doing? You went away and sent me postcards. I loved you. We conceived a child of love. We got married and moved into the loft before you were a driver. When I was born, we were in harmony in the every day. Now we were free. We worked in the films. I made black and soup. We ate lunch together. Zeke, the poet, built us a 16 foot long table, the center of our life. Food, wine, friends. Una, later Sebastian. Ken, Flo, E.C. and Asa Jacobs. Raymond, Tehenny, Una, and his silly Albert room. Pianos, Tui, Sky, and Big Sydney. Martin Keller. Cola, Adolphus, and Sean. Ken Kelman, Richard Foreman, Keith Mannheim, Hans Richter, Kestatkis, Vicky Kaitis, Sherry Gilbert, Ellen McKellar, George Machinis, Leo Agrocatris, Alice Mignoli, Lucia, Francine Curie, Robert Pomodori, Kelly Angel. Your life is like the films, little fragments, memories, images, the poetry of cats, wet streets reflecting life, Chopin. We went to Lithuania in 1977, your home, only you and me. I met your mother, your brothers, Petrus and Klaus. We stayed in your mother's house, drank Petrus's beer, beer with the mother. There were cousins, nieces, nephews. You climbed the big birch tree by your mother's house. We went hunting for mushrooms and cooked them. You were afraid the KBG would come for you. Lithuania was a world of tears. We returned to New York. I knew more of you. We loved each other at the moment we were free and later formed Sebastian. You made a film called Paradise Not Yet Lost for Una's third year. You worked on your films, driven to complete your work. I learned to be a photographer to print black and white film. I inspired through the work. I nursed Una. I took her with me everywhere. I fought to be me. I loved your time. I am as displaced as you in a different way. I can never know what you suffered. I was a baby when all of that happened. I am American, you are for me. I grieve for your lost world of feelings and song, and friends and family. You create your films, fragments of beauty in a broken world. You never asked me about my story. I never told you my story. If I had, I would have left. I loved you. I made a home for you. I cooked feasts for the birds. We drank wine, ate garlic, cheese and apples. You worked on your films. You wrote your columns for the French words. I learned to make books. George and Chinus taught me how to cut and paste little pieces of type. We got the courthouse for anthology in 1979. We worked so hard to make that happen. Sebastian was born in 1981, a love child. Raymond Alcorn designed the new anthology. It took us nine years to complete it. The opening was October 12, 1988. Those were hard years, raising money to do the construction work. 
the artists, artists and photographers come to the domain prints to make portfolios that you can sell to his money. We had help and support. After anthology opened to the courthouse, it was more hard to keep him afloat. Finding support to show and preserve the films, maintain the library, lots of drama on the board, keeping the integrity of the thought. John married Hurricane and then from the strength of the matter. Now it's a thriving library institution with a big expansion plan. We were married for 27 years, together for 31. Sebastian came back from China and we drew him in Brooklyn after he got divorced and so loved. Sebastian said family and friends are important. He helped you, traveled with you, worked with you. You had such a close relationship. The best father-son relationship I've ever witnessed. You blossomed, were acknowledged as an artist. You traveled the world. You didn't have much contact during those years, but I kept up with you through Sebastian and me. Your legacy lives on in him and Sebastian, and all the people you've touched and helped. Jonas, you know you with love. You celebrate your life. The beauty of your poetry, your films, your anthology, your vision of a world of beauty, good food, good wine, good friends. I see you in the lavender, the blue, and St. John Car. I remember the singing, playing your way on, the click of your phone that's recorded. Jonas, your legacy lives on in every one of us. You touched so many, inspired us to be free, to see the beauty and joy of life. My prayer is that we can all work together in harmony to bring the vision of the library and theology into being, that Sebastian and Ian can be supported as they take care of their state, that we can remember you and be inspired in our own work, that your legacy is on and on, like the wind that spread through the pine trees. And so brilliant, there's no end to completion. And 
no one can plead to life. In a sense, he's, it's more profound every moment. And Jonas's life wasn't complete. It ended. It was a rich, full, unimaginably full life. But it continues. And it continues in us. And we, we are able to remember him, to look at his work, and his films, his writing, and the Argentine archive, it continues. I don't know how to describe his inimitable voice, but it's in everything that he did. He was so persistent, and for, for myself, that's what I really got from him, was that he was unstoppable, that he was going to do what he wanted to do, that he was unafraid. Years ago, I was talking to an analyst about Mary McCarthy, how bold she was, that she just wrote whatever she wanted and other people be damned. And he asked, well, what about her beginnings? And I said, well, when she was six, she was on a train with her family from Seattle to Chicago. This was 1919. She was six years old. And both her parents died on that train ride of influenza since 1919. And he said, well, when that happens to you, when you lose that much, what really can you fear? And I think that was true of Jonas. He lost so much, but he gave so much because he was able never to be afraid. And I think we have to think about his courage a lot now especially now, because these are really hard times in America. Thank you, Jones.